And while the computer age provides better treatments for the mending of man, caregivers must now struggle with a new modern-day dilemma in the art of medicine. As electrophysiology has advanced, like so many other things today, electronics and computers have really revolutionized our approach to these problems. We are much more effective in taking care of and treating these problems than we ever were before. But frequently, and we joke about this, I spend more than half of my time interfacing with machines and computers than I ever do interfacing with people. We also kid around that a stethoscope is something that we probably should just throw away because it's not worth the weight in our pockets. Now, I think that might be a little extreme, but in reality, we really do accomplish our job using the more modern tools of today that we see in so many different areas of medicine and science and technology. Got it. Good stop there. Each year, medical corporations, institutions, and specialists spend countless hours and resources to curtail cardiovascular disease. New devices, drugs, and techniques are introduced every day to treat this enormous problem. Yet, the most effective method to stop it is a fairly simple one, and it's called prevention. And you hold the key. How are you? Great. Thank you. It's liftoff day. Oh, I feel great. Good. It's been just a little over 48 hours since Frank's life-saving stent procedure. He will be leaving the hospital shortly, but the battle is not over. Frank must now submit to a lifetime of self-discipline. A couple of parting thoughts. This has been a wake-up call, I hope, in, in terms of what we need to do with respect to uh, things like risks. We need to take this very seriously. The medications, uh, let's start with that. You're on a number of medications after this heart attack. They're all very important. Second thing is diet. I cannot stress the importance of diet uh, with you. The, the arbiter of how you're doing on your diet is going to be weight loss and cholesterol reduction as far as I'm concerned. Uh, an exercise program, cardiac rehab, we've talked about that, and that is extremely important. We don't want to accumulate frequent flyer miles in the hospital. Oh, for sure. <laughs> As Frank awaits the traditional wheelchair ride out of the hospital, he reflects on the events of the last two days. Today's my birthday. I'm born again. It's a new day for me. I, boy, it, it really scared me. And now I'm, I feel like I got a second chance. I feel like I'm, I'm alive. Frank takes the first stride towards recovery. How's that? Great. Thanks Recognizing so that not only has he escaped death, he was also lucky enough to avoid the scalpel's edge. As Frank departs, the next phase of his life begins. But he's not been cured, as heart disease is an insidious enemy awaiting to strike again. Reducing that risk now rests in his hands. Three months after his brush with death, Frank's commitment to recovery is clearly visible. I feel great. I feel like I can do all kinds of stuff. Um, I certainly can do a lot more now than I did before my heart attack. Uh, maybe it's because I want to do a lot more. I don't know, but I, I feel I can do more. I feel better. I feel like I have more strength. Uh, I just feel good. A 16-week cardiac rehab program is prescribed to rejuvenate Frank's heart muscle. Coupled with a personalized nutritional program, his energy and stamina have improved as planned, and specialists are encouraged by his progress. He, he's much more confident. I started Frank when he, start, when he began the program, and I've seen a great, great change in him. He feels much more confident. He feels good about what he's done, um, and he said his exercise capacity has really increased, and I'm really proud of him. I think he's done fantastic. A cardiac catheterization study in two months will confirm if Frank's artery remains open. For now, Mr. Clementsburg can take solace in knowing that the steps he has taken thus far are working. <laughs> Today, Frank lives, breathes, loves. He touches, hears, sees. His mere existence can be attributed to the vision of medical innovators endowed with the skill and courage 
to turn back the deadly effects of heart disease. I've always cherished the fact that I entered the practice of medicine. But I don't think anyone uh, in any other profession has the same satisfaction uh, that uh, we in the medical profession have when we know we save someone's life. Uh, and the uh, gratification, uh, the gratitude uh, that patients extend to us uh, for these uh, uh, events are really um, uh, a great reward. I've always had heroes. I still have heroes. But when you think about those early days, and then you take a quantum leap to where we are today, had those contributions not been made, we would not be able to, in any way, be making the progress we are today in these exciting times. Good, sir, very drippy. Uh, my turn? Here we go. How are you? Good, how are you? Well, this is the end of the road here. I'd get the heck out of town. Today marks the half-year anniversary of Frank's heart attack and life-saving stent procedure. He's been invited back to the hospital, not to commemorate the occasion, but rather for a routine follow-up catheterization to examine his heart vessels. For you, from your standpoint, everything is going to be exactly the same as it was before, only hopefully we will not have to do any angioplasties or stent work, anything like that. As Dr. Rysak meets with Frank to discuss this morning's study, a seemingly trivial yet ominous discussion transpires in the patient waiting area. We'll take a look. Hopefully, uh, hopefully he's taking care of those uh, with his good diet and all the medications he's on. Yep. Has he been good? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll get you in there pretty quickly here, okay? Whenever you're ready. I'm sure. Good. Okay. Frank, give me a breath in and hold. A half hour later, this lighthearted comment by Frank's wife, Carol, becomes more significant in the cath lab. That shows the problem right there. A dye study of Frank's previously treated artery demonstrates two small narrowings just outside the borders of the two stents. Right at the proxy, it's a border stenosis. Luckily for Frank, the stents have kept the vessel open enough to avoid another heart attack. Uh, Frank, we have a partial reclosure of that artery uh, where the stent is placed. We're going to uh, take a, several more views, make some decisions here. An inspection of the heart's pumping chamber confirms that the muscle has completely recovered. Oh, wow, that's nice. That's nice. All right, when you came in with your heart attack, the heart muscle was looking severely uh, damaged. And because the artery uh, was opened so quickly, uh, most of that heart muscle has recovered and it continues to work very well, to function very well. So that's very, very good news. So it's one of those good news, bad news situations where the heart muscle has remained very strong, but the artery has partially reclosed and we're going to, we're going to try and uh, open that artery back up right now. We're going to balloon it up again. While ballooning the artery, Rysak discovers that this fresh black is soft, unlike the hardened disease he battled six months previously. Okay, we have that balloon up. Good news is it's real soft stuff. It dilated right up. We got pretty much full expansion of this balloon at low uh, pressures. That means good. That's a good sign. You like that. Due to the newness of this latest lesion, Rysak's employment of balloon angioplasty easily opens the vessel. Oh, yeah. All right, Frank, we're all done. Do I have to get tuned up every once in a while? Well, I hope not, Frank. I, what I'd rather tune up are things like your diet and your cholesterol and your fat intake. I'd rather do it a little more in a little more preventative sense rather than coming in every six months needing more angioplasty. Uh, okay, you convinced me. <laughs> you say three strikes and you're out, Frank. Thanks again, Dr. Reiser. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Frank. Innovative cardiovascular researchers and physicians have done their part to provide Frank Clemensburg with a new lease on life. But even through all their worthy endeavors, the demon of atherosclerosis lies endemic in all of us. Prolonged good health now rests 
on Frank's shoulders. Within all of us lies a wondrous network, a gift to mankind, a human heart. In most cases, our ally. Sadly, too often we become its enemy. Let us protect it. Let us embrace it. Are you up to the task? I'm Cliff Robertson, and it's a matter of the heart and the will.